a lot of stuff to do and a short time window. We got to get the truck down to get the oil changed today. But um, we got the horses moved out onto the first rotational grazing pasture. And now that we've had some rain, we are going to be working on getting the weeds mowed down in the pasture before we bring them in. Um, because uh, it's pretty gnarly out here. I don't know if you can see it all that well, but there is a lot of weeds out here. So, yeah, you really can't see it all that well on here, but it's a lot. So I am gonna be working on getting that cleared and mowed at least a section of it today before we have to take the truck down. So, goal is basically to mow the weeds down to grass level and then as the rains come and the grass blows up and grows quickly, the grass will hopefully snuff out the remainder of the weeds that have held out. And uh, just continuing on that fight against the dog fennel. Second week, it was supposed to be first week, but this is the second week check-in on the garden. The garden's doing awesome. The trellis, the green beans are doing really good. As you can see, green beans are all growing. Well, they're getting close to that height to start climbing the trellis. And then I sowed some more green beans in here because just not we did not have a very good germination rate. This is a weed. But we've got some new green beans starting to pop up. The squash is doing beautifully. I've started training it up the trellis. I mean, you just get down on its level. It's doing beautifully. So Tomatoes are doing good. We got cabbage transplants out here. It got really, really hot yesterday, so they, <clears throat> after they transplanted, of course, so they struggled, but they're bouncing back. They're bouncing back, they're doing good. They're not totally miserable. And this is all season cabbage, so I am, this is kind of an experiment. It might grow, it might not. So we shall see. I've got it well mulched, see we lost one. That one was small, so maybe it'll come back. Oh, this one got coated over by the mulch, but they're doing they're doing pretty good. So the goal is that the mulch will keep the ground cool for the roots, and they'll actually do well. This one was one we had in the garden from winter, and um, I tried transplanting it. It's bouncing back. It got really, really stressed out, but it's bouncing back. Tomatoes are all doing good. These are our ground cherries. Ah, super excited for ground cherries. But garden's doing great. We've got our replacements for the strawberry plants that we lost in transplant. They're coming in any day now from MI Gardener. Oh, oh, you got a sneaky. I got I missed one. Sneak. All right, so I gotta fix that one. But asparagus, all the asparagus came in and they are doing wonderfully can't really see them all that well because they've all ferned out but they're doing great I actually need to come in and heal this up a little bit more and bring in more soil to put on top of them and then finish with a good top layer of mulch and then they will be finished and done with all the preparation That's much better. So, <laughs> little man here's been playing in the hose with the ducks. But um, I didn't mow everything because there was places where there wasn't, wasn't any weeds. Um, you'll see that there's some clumps of grass right here. Like right here next to me, I've got some clumps of grass. There wasn't any weeds there, so there was no need for me to mow. But um, I got all the weeds. There might be a couple here and there, but um, we're gonna see. I'm expected to rain this afternoon. I'm excited to compare side by side because there's sections right here behind you guys, behind the camera. Um, where I didn't mow, and then this area right here where I did mow. And unfortunately our mower has a maximum height of four and a half inches. So um, I can't mow at the six inches that I would like. But um, we got it mowed to four and a half inches. And then um, the area behind you guys, like I said, is unmowed. So it's, there's high places, there's low places. But I'm excited to see once the rain comes, which does better, the grass that wasn't mowed or the grass that was mowed. Because um, this deposited grass clippings, we've got grass clippings now deposited into the grass, and uh, I would expect that would give it a fresh 
um, dose of nitrogen, uh, fertilize it as the rains come in. So uh, we'll see. I did not mow the what is the intended next paddock for the horses and cows. So um, I only mowed what's going to have at least another two weeks of rest before the horses and cows are on it. So we'll see how much it grows between now and then. On another note, we have peepers hatching right now. Our silkies are, have been sitting on eggs for the last couple weeks and these two just hatched this morning. Hi, sweetheart. Correction, all chicks like me. It's like I'm the mother of all chicks. Kind of. Hi, sweetheart. So this is a vaulted crest. See how it has the bump right here? Can you see this? This one has flat crest. This has the vaulted crest. So this one's gonna have a more fluffier, more pronounced palm on the top of its head and it is a painted so that's this is what we're breeding for because they look really really nice my sweetheart you guys are just and so cute they're also super high quality yeah, well they're, they're they're considered high quality just because of their looks but uh some people will I, I i like how they look they're they're very very pretty they look extra fluffy but uh these are two healthy little peepers Exactly what we were hoping for. This one's still drying off a bit. Yeah, so. Alright, let's this get them. Let's get them home and into the brood box. Look at this guys, we got apples. They're coming in in clusters. And I've been seeing ladybugs on here, which is really hopeful because we have seen aphids. And I haven't gotten out here to spray with our uh, neem oil solution. But um, the apples are doing really well and they're coming in beautifully. And we got look, we got another batch right here. But oh my goodness, so yes, we can grow apples in Florida. And uh, both apple trees are doing pretty good. Lots of apple clusters, lots of flower clusters coming in. So I'm really excited to see how they do. Hello there, Mama. Hi there, Mama. So Annabelle is doing great. I decided because um, she's still not showing any signs of labor to just let her go ahead and graze now that we're getting the rotational grazing. Oh, you loving these chin scratches? Oh, she's loving this. But um, I figured go ahead and let her because she still needs, she's, she's still a little under conditioned that I, I would like a little bit more conditioning on her before she has. So I'm letting her graze with the horses and cows on this. Um, this is the best thing for her right now. Uh, and the big reason why I'm doing this is uh, to help reduce her risk of um, milk fever. And uh, the kind of the ideology behind that, and you'll have to do your research on this, but the ideology behind that is that because I'm not providing her with calcium, her body will then produce its own calcium. And I still will give her the CMPK pace, the preventative measures, but it's just an additional thing that we can do to help try to prevent her from getting milk fever. Um, she's older, I don't think she'll get it, but it's always a possibility. But um, this is kind of the mentality is that I've, I'm not giving her any grains. She does well with, without grains. The only reason I've been giving her grains over the winter is because we, don't, um, we have a lot of horses here and the, and the paddock, they ate it down really quickly. And uh, they were on hay, they had supplements on hay, they had plenty of food but it's not as rich and um, I, I wanted to give her that extra extra bit of calorie to uh, help on getting her fattened back up. So she's almost where I want her to be. I'm pretty happy with how she's looking right now. If she were to calve, I wouldn't be as concerned as she, when she was earlier. But when she gets closer to, right now she's not showing any signs and this paddock is small. So I, I wanna say probably a fourth of an acre. So uh, once she starts, I can see her daily, I can monitor her and keep an eye on her and see if she's showing any signs of labor. Right now she's not really showing any signs that she's going to calve anytime soon. She hasn't bagged up. Um, she's still fattening up, so unfortunately I can't check her pins right now because she's sunk it in from just, she lost weight from Lexi milking her out heavily. But um, 
once she starts to show those signs that she's gonna calf soon, I will get you guys in, let you guys see her all around, um, and you guys can get in on uh, guessing when she's gonna calf. And um, another thing also is with these older cows, sometimes they'll go right up to 24 hours calving and they'll bag up, their pins will drop, and they'll calve right there. So we'll see. She's nine years old, so she could do that this time around. But she's pretty round. <laughs>